Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek here. Uh, I want to talk about using rifaximin uh, to help lower inflammation. Now, most medical conditions we have, like if you watch my video on the four ways we die, profound genetic disorders, accidents, you know, environmental things, gunshots, starved to death, uh, infections, and then if it's not those three things, everybody dies of inflammation, and that's going to be a stroke, a heart attack, 85% of cancers, you know, the consequence of the diabetes, you know, chronic depression, on and on and on, all right? These are all chronic inflammatory conditions, and the inflammation just doesn't come out of nowhere. It's coming from somewhere, and when you look across the spectrum of these fields, what they're finding is uh, many, many, many of these disorders are associated with, with either high levels of inflammatory cytokines in the bloodstream or high levels of inflammatory cytokines in the brain. And so the goal here, well, the traditional goal in medicine is just give them a drug to lower inflammation, like give them steroids or something like that, okay? And that's, the options we have in that way are not safe, okay? And so it's really, you gotta look for the inflammation and turn it off. Now, <clears throat> The, the biggest source of inflammation, uh, in my opinion, is coming out of the intestinal tract with overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine. Now this technically is called SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Uh, researchers are more and more using the word just dysbiosis, meaning they don't want to get caught up in precisely defining SIBO, but they want to just say the bacteria are off and this is what we're seeing. And they're reporting a lot of leaky gut now the term they use is intestinal permeability uh, leaky gut and when you leak through the small intestine into the surrounding tissue they estimate that that's about 70 percent of the entire immune system is within a millimeter or two of the small intestine okay you so you leak this stuff out your white blood cells are programmed to create, have an inflammatory response to anything that's not your tissue type. So it could be a fragment of a bacteria or, or a food fragment from a banana or something, you know, or tomatoes or spices. So you'd say there's particular molecules, maybe in nightshades that really react with the white blood cells. And boom, you get this massive release of um, inflammatory chemicals that now drive a lot of these disorders. And so, now, there, there clearly are other sources of inflammation, and uh, I'll do another video on that soon to just kind of review all that. But <clears throat> the important one is because, again, this is 70% of the immune system you can activate with bacteria uh, is from the overgrowth of bacteria. Now, we've known about this for about 60 years. Uh, if you're adults with severe liver disease, and you get bacterial overgrowth, you might die. And this condition is called hepatic encephalopathy, okay? Hepatic encephalopathy is SIBO in somebody with a severely damaged liver. And we've known about this for a long time. And probably the best drug worldwide to, to control this for the last 30 years has been rifaximin, okay? So they don't think of it, the GI docs don't say, oh, it's for SIBO. They, oh, it's for liver disease. They don't understand that's the same thing, okay? Now, when you have SIBO, um, some of the literature suggests, and in my experience it's true, about a quarter to a third of patients don't really have any intestinal symptoms. Almost none, okay? And, or when you talk to them, they say, oh, I don't, no, I'm testing, I'm fine, but I'll say, uh, gee, can you eat tomatoes or spices? Oh, no, I can't. I can't do that. Well, that's a sign of SIBO and leaky gut, okay? Food intolerance typically is a sign of leaky gut uh, from bacterial overgrowth. And so, anyhow, you don't have to have a lot of symptoms here, okay? Now, when you use rifaximin, the standard treatment for a long time has been twice a day for 10 days. And there was one IBS diarrhea study that showed three times a day for 14 days was a little bit better. I still start with twice a day for 10. It works generally great in people. And also, if somebody gives you a script for the three times a day for 14, that's 42 divided by 2. That's enough for two 
two rounds of twice a day for 10. So economically, it's a little better, works better for you. And the, the problem that everybody's going to have, treating SIBO is not like treating pneumonia where you treat it and it's gone and it won't come back. SIBO is more of a structural problem that with the intestinal tract not being able to maintain this kind of uh, <clears throat> organization of the bacteria in your intestinal tract. So you use Rifaximin, you'll clear the bacteria out. But if, for instance, the intestinal tract is going too slow, you're going to relapse. Okay, it might be in two weeks, it might be in four months. All right, so the relapsing is very common. And if somebody is really sick, so we got a bunch of people beat up from COVID. Uh, they got a lot of neurological dysfunction. Uh, their intestinal tract probably is not functioning right. They got SIBO, most of them. I put them on Rifaximin. They might feel better for a little bit, you know, and then they just don't think it works. Well, it's because they're relapsing so fast. And so the sicker the patient, um, in terms of the more disabled the patient, put it that way, uh, I, I tend to use Rifaximin in a non-stop fashion. Twice a day, I don't stop. I'll, I'll continue that for four, six, eight months, depending on how uh, disabled they are. I, I want to generate more recovery just for them personally before I stop the Rifaximin. So I'll give them a good four, six, eight months. And then once we get out to that point, we just stop it and we they coast and most will be able to tell when they relapse and once you're out several months like that and you stop most adults can go a few to several months before they relapse again and then they'll only need 10 days at a time okay and so that's just for Rifaximin not working at the beginning often it's because uh, you just haven't taken it long enough and you're probably relapsing rapidly or you don't feel better okay right away well the neurological stuff takes two to three months to start to recover all right and, you know, at least for you to be noticeably improved in that way and so you've got to control the inflammation that long before you're going to start noticing it and again in adults you got the rifaximin the fish oil the dha high dha fish oil we're going to have our own nemechek silver high high potency dha uh, capsules real soon uh, you need the olive oil, the COC olive oil. We've got that. There's a variety of other brands you can use. And then for the majority of patients, you need the vagal stimulator, which you can uh, look at Nimichek Technologies uh, device. So I hope, hope this helps kind of round that out. And, uh, and if you need Rifaximin, you know, a lot of docs that don't understand, they're all uncomfortable with it. That's what a lot of people will come here for. They come out for a trip. They see me we do the first workup get everything squared away they go home and we get them on their rifaximin and so forth and we can do skypes for like a year and a half and by the time we're done they don't even need to come back yeah but we're we're still having visits just telemedicine visits over that time so if that's helpful give us a shout otherwise everybody take care bye